Hey everybody and welcome back to Sweatpants BI. It's me, Sean, here. Today on the channel, I'm gonna do a quick tutorial of perhaps a lesser known variant of a line chart that is called a bump chart. I had an uh, instance in my uh, day job last week where I needed to build out a bump chart. You know, at the moment I was like, I, I recognize this chart. I know I've seen it before. I had no idea that it was called a bump chart. So maybe you're familiar with it by another name. I feel like I've seen some other names for it. It's not too dissimilar from a ribbon chart in Power BI, but just to sort of sum up what a bump chart is, it's a version of a line chart where you're less focused on visualizing the specific data values for a measure, something like you know uh, cost of sales or revenue um, or whatever, whatever you have. And you're more focused on the change in rankings for that measure across different items in a uh, categorical data field. So in the example that I'm gonna be walking through here, we're going to use the toy sales data set that I've used on this channel all the time, and we're going to focus on um, visualizing the change in rankings for different product categories over time based on revenue. So you're always gonna have a product that is our top ranked category. You're always gonna have a product that's our second ranked, our third ranked. But in this visual, because we're visualizing it over time using time series uh, values, you're gonna see some of the products change over time based on their rankings relative to each other in revenue. Clear as mud. I know I didn't do the best job of explaining that. I think it's going to make a lot more sense when we actually start building out our bump chart. For, so for those of you that are interested in figuring out how to build a bump chart using the native line chart visual in Power BI, let's go ahead and jump over to our report and get to it. So over here in Power BI, of course, we've got our toy sales data set. And I'm going to start over here by just doing some quick pre-work. So for our uh, pre-work here, what we're going to focus on first is just building out a matrix with the items that we're going to need in our bump chart. So first, I'm going to go ahead and grab my revenue measure here. You can see I've got about $14.5 million on sale in sales. Let's go ahead and grab our product category uh, field from our data set, which has five items here. Arts and crafts, electronics, games, sports and outdoors, and toys. So that means that the number of lines in our bump chart will be five. We're going to constantly be comparing the change in rankings for these five items based on revenue over time. So that means that we're also going to need a time series component here. So let's go ahead and open up our dates table. I'm going to grab my year month col uh, column from my dates and I'm going to use that to create columns in my matrix here so that you can see January 2022 through September 2023. And you can see that, okay, it looks like toys are pretty consistently the highest item here, uh, followed by electronics, followed by um, games, followed by sports and outdoors and arts and crafts. I'm gonna go ahead and make this uh, just a little bit larger for those of you that have small screens. Let's make this as easy to read as possible. Let's go ahead and increase our grid here, add some padding as well. Let's go ahead and um, increase our column values quite a bit. And of course, our row values. There we go, just makes it a little bit easier to sort of see. And you can see that, you know, it looks like arts and crafts start out, you know, pretty low and then start to, you know, increase pretty significantly over time. So we might uh, specifically see a, a pretty quick change in the, in the ranking hierarchy for arts and crafts relative to some of the other products. But the next thing that we're going to need to actually build out our bump chart, since we're not going to be using revenue in the actual bump chart, is we're going to need to create a ranking measure that for every single month here in our time frame is going to show what the top ranked uh, uh, product category is and the second, third, fourth, and fifth. And we're going to expect to see those rankings change over time based on the revenue values that we see here. So we're going to need to create our rank measure. And this is a relatively easy measure to write. I am going to do it a little bit differently from how I usually uh, do this. And I'm going to call this product category revenue ranking. And normally when I demonstrate rankings uh, in Power BI or when I'm teaching DAX, historically I've used the rank X function. 
I'm still adjusting to the new rank function, which is one of Power BI's new window functions that I think has the potential to make this stuff much, much easier. But like I said, I don't know if I'm ready to call it easier yet because it's a brand new function that is forcing me to kind of reconstruct uh, or uh, completely reconfigure the way that I have done ranking in DAX for the past, uh, you know, going on 10 years or so. So let's go ahead and write out our rank formula here. And the first thing that we need to do is specify what type of ranking we're performing, typically dense or skip. Then we need to identify the item that we're ranking from our data set. And in this case, we're ranking uh, our product category field. Next, we need to specify order by uh, parameters for our uh, ranking. In other words, you know, what item are we ranking and how are we ranking it against our uh, product categories? So we're gonna use our revenue measure, which is just summing up revenue from our fact table. We want that revenue to run from higher values to smaller values. In other words, we want our uh, highest revenue product category to be number one and our lowest revenue product category to be number five. So we wanna use a descending rank and we also want to use uh, product categories in our ranking, and I'm just going to use descending order for that as well. Now let's go ahead and get rid of revenue from our copy matrix here, and let's drop our new ranking formula into our matrix here. And it looks at a glance like this is working perfectly fine. Let me go ahead and just line up these two matri matrices so that they're a little bit easier to compare. Toys should be number one, followed by electronics, followed by games, followed by sports and outdoors, followed by arts and crafts. And I'm expecting, notice with arts and crafts, the numbers start out pretty small and then they sort of take off around October 2022. That's where I would expect to see the arts and crafts rankings start to drop. And you can see that sure enough, arts and crafts becomes our second ranking at the very end of our data set there. So that's all looking good. I think that we're set up to start building out our actual bump chart. So let's go ahead and go to our next page here. And we're going to add a native line chart visual from Power BI over here. And let's go ahead next and grab our year month field. We're going to use that on our X axis. We're going to use product categories for our legend. There's our arts and crafts, electronics, games, sports and outdoors and toys. And I need to grab my new ranking measure over here and add that to my y-axis so that I have my values cleanly presented over here. So the next thing that we're going to do here is let's go ahead and format this bad boy uh, so that it looks like a proper bump chart. And first things first, let's go ahead and start with our x-axis and get that out of the way first. I'm going to just get rid of the year month title here. I'm going to go with DIN for my font. And let's increase this so that it's much easier to read. Next, let's go over to our y-axis and let's go ahead and make sure that our, let's see, I, I think I'm gonna keep the title here. This is, I would say that your users, most of them are probably not going to be very familiar with a bump chart. So there could be confusion as to what they're really looking at here. So I am making the decision on this to go ahead and keep my title on the y-axis, I'm going to make it a little bit larger. It's important that our users know that revenue is determining the ranking that they're seeing here. So we can call this product category revenue ranking, or you can even give this an alias or something. If you think that that measure title might be confusing, you could give this something more descriptive. That's up to you. The other thing that I'm going to do while I'm here is notice that my top ranked value is down here at the bottom because the line chart doesn't know what we're trying to do with this measure. So our number one item is down here at the bottom and our lowest revenue item is at the top. This could also make it confusing to interpret this bump chart. Usually the top ranked item, because it represents the most revenue, is at the top. So one thing that we're gonna do here for this line chart is we're going to invert the range so that our number one item is at the top and our number five item is always at the bottom. So let's go ahead now and clean up our Y axis values. We're gonna use DIN again, I'm gonna use 16 as my font size. And one more thing that you might run into here that I'm not a huge fan of uh, when building the bump chart is that because our rankings start at one instead of zero, 
Our, that one line runs right across the top of the line chart. It almost makes it look like, in this case, like it's just sort of a frame or something or a border. So I like to add just a little bit of padding between our uh, top ranked and bottom ranked value here. So one thing that you can do here is go in and hard code in some range values. So we could go in and, and set our uh, minimum at zero and our maximum at six. What I don't like about this is that then you end up with zero on the Y axis in this instance and six on the Y axis and neither of those actually represent real data values. There is no zero ranking, there is no six ranking in this specific instance. So one kind of hack for this is instead of you know hard coding in whole numbers, go with decimals. You may not even know that you can use decimals in your hard coded Y axis values. You absolutely can. And if you wanted to get super fancy, you could also uh, create some kind of a function or measure logic to also use to sort of dynamically scale the Y axis. All I'm trying to do here is just add a little bit of additional padding so that I can see my one, two, three, four, five a little bit more clearly. Last, the last thing that we're going to do here, well, not last, but the, the biggest uh, thing that we're going to do now is we're going to uh, go ahead and update the actual lines themselves. And this is a bump chart is one instance where I don't necessarily mind using the smooth lines. Normally, I would say never use smooth lines if you're visualizing, uh, you know, real uh, time series data. But since we're just focused on rankings here, and all of these rankings are pretty discrete for each month, I don't think that the smooth the smoothing of the lines really adds too much distortion. So this is more of an aesthetic or cosmetic choice that I'm making here. It's not an endorsement of smooth lines by any means, but this is one area, again, where I think you can maybe get away with it. So I'm gonna use a five or six uh, stroke width uh, size, and I'm gonna leave that as is. The next thing that I'm gonna do just to make this a little bit easier to read is I'm gonna add some markers. Right now, the markers are about the same uh, stroke size as my lines, so let's make those just a little bit bigger here. And the last thing that I think would make this chart a little bit easier to read is if I just scrapped the legend entirely and added series labels, which are very, very useful for sort of making uh, charts with a fairly small number of categories easier to read. So, so since we only have five product categories, I think in this specific example, it's much easier for the user to interpret if we just scrapped the legend that's up here and actually label the lines themselves. So let's go ahead and open these up. I'm gonna use DIN as my font size. Let's go ahead and increase these to about 15. And I'm also gonna bold them. And I also want the uh, colors of the series labels to match the uh, colors of their respective lines. So let's go ahead and start with arts and crafts here. I'm gonna use blue for that, followed by electronics, which is kind of a lighter or sky blue, followed by games, which is this really deep navy, followed by sports and outdoors, which is this sort of plum color here, uh, and followed by toys, which is of course our green. The last thing that if you wanted to, to just kind of make this visual even more effective is if you wanted to add some kind of a title to this, like change in product category ranking over time based on revenue. That's also just one way that you could make it a little bit clearer to your users what they're looking at. And if you wanted to add an insight or something to your subtitle, again, just another way of sort of giving your user something a little bit more to look at. I'm actually gonna borrow the same teal that is used in my toys line. So as you can see, toys have consistently been our number one product category based on revenue, but Sports and outdoors have made up consistent ground in 2023. And so there we go. Now we've got a bump chart uh, that is you know, perfectly serviceable. We didn't have to you know, import a custom visual or build out our own visual. All we did was we just you know, cleverly manipulated the native line chart in Power BI to get exactly the same outcome that we were looking for. 
So there you go. I hope that if you have a bump chart example that you are using for a project uh, in your day job, I hope that that at least sort of gave you the tools and pointed you in the right direction as to how to build a bump chart using the native line chart visual in Power BI. If you have other ideas for more obscure data visuals that can be built right out, right out of the box using the native visuals that are supplied in Power BI, I would love to know about them. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this quick tutorial, feel, feel free to like or subscribe to Sweatpants BI. And as always, thanks everybody so much for checking out the video. I've been Sean Chandler. This is Sweatpants BI. I will see you next time. Thanks so much, everybody.